Hey everyone, uh, Ben Sibola here, coming at you from Porirua, uh, the Ole Football Academy, uh, where we breathe, eat, sleep, and train the beautiful game. I'm here with Warden Dan today, and uh, I'm gonna walk Dan through the number system. Uh, so make sure that you give Dan a big high five uh, when you get back as well, because he's been holding down the fort, uh, making sure the academy is safe while you've all been gone. So again, today we're gonna to walk through the number system. So this would be a great video for new players that have just entered the academy for the club football season, but also a great video for parents that are new or, or even have been with us for quite some time. So the number system is really important to what we do. It provides a lot of clarity around roles and responsibilities. And it also provides a common language that we can use with the players and also the coaching staff. So the number system is really clear. Uh, we play a 4-3-3, and it's actually perfectly in line with the New Zealand football curriculum. So attached to this video, will include a document to the New Zealand football curriculum. Um, it's an amazing document. They go through individual players, roles, responsibilities. They even give uh, reference to certain players, players like Ryan Thomas, Chris Wood, that play in certain places on the pitch. So we'd really like you to review that. So today I'll talk to you um, in regards to more of like an Ole context. Uh, starting with all 11 positions. So the goalkeeper is the number one position. So he or she's a sweeper keeper, they play a high line, and they have to be really competent with their feet, but also cognitive at solving problems. So the goalkeeper position is an awesome position at LA. It requires a lot of courage and a lot of vulnerability because they do some things that are maybe perceived as risky. But we know that in the long term, some of the stuff that you're doing at the young ages, playing with a high line, sometimes at half field, or playing out of the back, that is gonna allow them to do some really great things in the future. Um, moving forward are the three and the four, and these are sort of your tr traditional center backs. Um, they're ball playing center backs. So like the goalkeeper, they're real competent on the ball, they're great at solving problems, but they're also really important in the defense, obviously. Uh, they keep the team together, they squeeze space, and they're really connected to the number six. So moving forward, the number six is what we like to call the controlling midfielder, uh, or maybe the controller, or the pivot. Uh, there's all sorts of things, but the number six is really integral in sort of holding the team together. It's the kind of the glue to the team uh, in the spine. Um, moving forward, you have the two number eights, and these are also your two other central midfielders. Uh, contrary to the New Zealand football curriculum, we don't have a number 10. So we sort of eliminated the number 10 position at LA maybe five or six years ago. We sort of call it the no number 10 philosophy. So we think that everybody has to do equal work and that there's not really any special players in the system or everybody's special. Really depends what way you look at it. But the number 10 is sort of known for being able to do what he or she likes. And we like the idea that all players, again, are equal and they all have to work and they all have to share responsibility for the team. Everybody is part of the team, all for one, one for all. So that's the number eights. The number eights are really creative players. They hold the team together. They provide a lot of balance. Typically, they're really cognitive, really smart, and they're definitely competent on the ball because they have to play at 360 degrees, just like the number six. Uh, moving up from there, we have the number seven, the 11, and the nine. And these are sort of your forward players. The nine is always creating length, making the pitch as big as possible. And the seven and 11 are your really creative players. Uh, they're able to playing inside, playing lots of one twos and playing in combination. And also you have the two and the five. The two and the five are your outside wing backs or your full backs. Traditionally, you might call them something like that, but they provide width and they make the pitch as expansive. They make the pitch as big as possible. Um, what you'll see through the positional game is that allows a lot of shapes to materialize. So as you make the pitch big and you occupy certain positions, it allows lots of geometry to come, come into play. So a really simple uh, shape that you see all the time is the triangle. So the triangle is a really amazing structure because it's really rigid, it's really strong. Um, and as you'll see, there's lots of triangles in the system. So here you have the three, the four, and the six, and they sort of make the first triangle, except the one that the goalkeeper can also make. So you can sort of see there's two triangles stacked on top of each other. And if you look at another triangle, you have that at the six and the two eights. We call this shape here, the hourglass. And that's just kind of the, the middle structure of the team, sort of holds everything together. Again, it's kind of like the glue that always has to be intact. Moving forward down the spine, you have the nine who creates another triangle. And depending on the number nine, he might play more high or she might play high or they might come in and they might even play as a false nine where they're more into the midfielder, but you, but you can still see that the triangles are present. 
Again, if you start just connecting dots, it's quite a fun thing. You can try this at home. You can start to see all the lines, angles, and distances that are present inside the system. So it's pretty fun. Um, one of the things that I love to do, even as a coach, is basically just draw shapes and start connecting dots. It's a really great exercise for uh, players at home because you can, you can start to see all the passing lines that are available. Um, again, the system is really fluid, so it's sort of got a total football vibe to it, which basically means that players can move in and out of positions. Um, in future videos, we might even get into uh, what foot people should be or what, what players place in certain positions. So for instance, the seven is a left-footed position, preferably. But in a perfect world, all the players would be two-footed, which means that you can kind of rotate, you can have players come in and out and come and occupy all sorts of positions. So that's why it's really important that when you're working at your threes at home, that you can both do left foot and right foot. With the under 11s and under 12s, something happens where you have to take out two players. So in that case, we take out the number seven and we take out the number 11. So again, under 11, under 12, play nine aside. So the two becomes the two slash seven, and the five becomes the five slash 11 in that instance. But that also doesn't take into account all the variables and all the other things that it can occur. So for instance, the nine could pop into the 11 position, in which case the eight could occupy the nine position, the six could come occupy the eight, and even the four, the three could occupy the six, and the goalkeeper could very quickly become the four. So there's also lots of opportunities for rotations, a lot of freedom in the system. Uh, in this case, that would give you one more attacker in the high positions if the goalkeeper were to occupy one of the center back positions. Um, there's lots of things like that can happen inside the system, um, and you can still retain your numbers. One thing we would like for you guys to try at home tonight is maybe just sit down on the table with mom and dad uh, you might be at dinner and have a salt shaker, a pepper shaker, a cup, the tomato sauce, um, or ketchup as we call it in the United States, and actually lay out the number system and talk through the numbers and talk through little rotations that you could do, maybe preferences and positions and which foot uh, players would want to use to maybe pass down this angle or pass across the field. So there's all sorts of things that you can talk about. It's quite a fun little um, project to go sit down again with mom, dad, brother, or sister, and just kind of investigate and get curious about the number system and why we do certain things. And then come back to some of the coaches with questions that you might have. So for instance, why do we like to play with the number four as left-footed? Um, why do we like the six to be two-footed? And why does the goalkeeper play a high line? These are really great questions that come into play. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Talk about football, talk about how you're doing, talk about your hit hat training, how your threes are going, or any ideas you might have about training. Um, again, we hope you guys are doing really, really well. We miss you a lot. Let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope that before we know it, we're back out on the beautiful pitch, uh, hanging out with Warden Dam and getting to play some football uh, the Ole way.